Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you pray with me? Creator of light and dark, we thank you for the moments in our life that bring us joy and happiness, that bring us pride in our family and the love that we get to share with each other. But we too also need to thank you for some of the pain and suffering we may go through in this life. Although you are not the cause, you always find a way to make good out of bad situations. And we thank you for this and rejoice in this. And we do it in light of your love and in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome home. You guys missed me last week, right? Yes. yes. Now, I know the girls did a great job. They both deserve M&Ms for a last minute, uh-oh, I cannot come in type situation. Uh, but I thank you all for uh, bearing with us when life events come up. Uh, God finds a way to make a joyful noise out of that. So as I come to you this morning, I come to you with a happy heart. That God, this time COVID, I'm going to be honest, this time COVID really kicked my butt. I've had it twice before and it felt like a, a mild cold. This time I slept for almost a week straight, it felt like. And my wife barricaded me in the room in solitary confinement, <laughs> feeding me whenever I could eat. But I am so happy to be back home with you all this morning. So let me start the service out by saying it is my great honor and privilege to say may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you rise now as we sing the first hymn of the morning? Shop in Lake Placid. I 
he was here and I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other celebrations this morning? I think we ought to celebrate Dan's birthday today. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> sure you are.
This is true that the Spirit of God lives in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. If Christ lives in you, you will, you will live. Though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life. The Spirit does this because you have made, been made right with God. The Spirit of the God who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. So the God who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to you. He will do this because of the Spirit who lives in you. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
turn with me to John 11, we will be reading the story of Lazarus. It's verses 1 through 45. If you don't have a Bible with you, it's okay. We keep them up on the screens anyway. But it reads, now, in a certain, uh, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through G though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to, to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now trying... The Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of a day? These who walk, those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring to merely sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let's go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said, to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. And when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately that the teacher is here and is coming for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. The Jews were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus <coughs> began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, 
Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, had come with Mary, had, been, had seen what Jesus had did, and believed in him. And those are the words of God for the people of God. And together we say, Thanks be to God. What a story, right? Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are three adult siblings who live in Bethany, or are from Bethany, and are some of Jesus' very best friends in the world. But they are also followers. And that part is important to remember. So Lazarus comes down with an illness or becomes sick. And his sisters, Mary and Martha, send word to Jesus to come quickly. Jesus is away preaching across the Jordan at the moment. So they send messengers out to Jesus asking him to come back to their home. And Jesus' response to that situation seems surprising. At least surprisingly casual. And in verse 5 and 6, it says that though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after hearing that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Are you with me? Jesus expresses confidence that Lazarus' illness will not lead to death, but rather to the glory of God. Yet by the time Jesus finally gets to Bethany, what happens? Lazarus is already dead, dead and buried. So we can now understand the anguished cries of Martha and Mary to Jesus. Both sisters meet him separately, but they both say pretty much the same thing, and that is, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Implied in this statement are some highly critical questions of Jesus, perhaps even accusations, like, where were you? Where were you, Jesus? Where were you when I needed you the most? Why did it take you so long to get here? I thought you loved my brother. So why did you let him die? I thought you cared about us. And at this point, all those neighbors who were gathering around, they started asking the same kind of questions. In verse 37, they say, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have saved this man from dying? And aren't these the exact same type of questions we want to ask Jesus? Especially at the darkest times of our life? Where are you? Where are you at? When we needed you the most, Lord, where are you? You could have prevented all of this from happening. All this horrible pain and sorrow. Now I would like to pause here for a moment. And I want you to take notice. 
that Jesus does not rebuke anyone. He doesn't rebuke Martha or Mary or even the others for saying what they said. And know that it is the exact same for all of us as well. We are able to take our emotions, our fears, our frustrations, our anger to God and lament. And if you've ever read a psalm, you should know that it is encouraged in our faith to do so. These are deep, deep roots in the Christian faith. They go back thousands of years. Our Creator wants to engage with us about what is happening around the world, what is happening in our lives, what we see wrong in this creation. But understand this, that to Martha, Christ responds, but with a promise. In verse 23, Christ says, your brother will rise again. And after Martha confirms her belief in the resurrection on the last day, Jesus responds to her with another promise. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they will die, or even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will Never God. He also assures that those who are alive in him will never experience spiritual death. That is the most comforting and hopeful promise for all of humanity. Jesus is providing a glimmer of hope in a dark situation. In the midst of all this grief and pain and sorrow that we see all around us. He does it by promising eternal life that begins here and now, today, and every day if we so choose. Now, John does not describe a verbal response from Jesus to Mary, but tells us that when, when Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, that he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Then after asking where Lazarus is laid, it is Jesus himself, we read, who begins to weep. That is the shortest verse in the entire Bible. And it goes like this. I, I bet you can memorize it. <laughs> Jesus wept. I don't know if our brains can comprehend the creator of the entire universe weeping for one soul. The billions and billions of souls on this planet that have existed. Our God found a way to weep for one soul. Jesus is showing us that he's not just with us during our hard times and our times of grief, but he is always actively working to draw us, to draw us in during these hard times. Christ's actions demonstrate his commitment to humanity. And he gives us all assurances that we can have faith. We can have faith in him and his promises of life forever. Jesus pulls the hope of the future, the hope of the future resurrection into our present day. And it is in this hope that we can cling to in our darkest moments. In verse 39, when they come to the tomb, Jesus says, take away the stone. And then Martha becomes alarmed. 
even though she had just boldly professed to who Christ was when he first arrived. She literally called him the Messiah. And then in verse 22, he says, even, she says, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Remember, these are not just friends of Jesus. These are some of his very first believers. And this is why that's important. Because now, when it's a dark time, she's not so confident that Jesus has this kind of power. That's a big deal. And aren't we like that sometimes? Don't we sometimes over-prepare for fear that we won't be taken care of? Have you, ever, have you ever wondered if Jesus really understands your pain? Are we really any different from this family? Martha says, Lord, there's already a stench. He's been dead four days. You are too late. But we find Jesus is undaunted by the stench of death. And the stone is taken away. And after repeating his promise that this event would lead to the glory of God, and praying out loud for the benefit of the crowd around, Jesus yells these famous words. Lazarus, come out. And obediently, Lazarus comes out of the tomb, probably stumbling around, wrapped with his face wrapped in cloth. Unbind him and let him go, Jesus replies. This is an emotional scene. And I get recalls from the promise earlier that he said the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out. And the shepherd calls his sheep by name and leads them out. You see, Jesus seemed very slow in coming. As a matter of fact, it seemed as if he was too late, and all hope lost. But with Jesus, but with Christ, we find it's never too late. <clears throat> even when we are convinced that all hope is gone, even when we already have conceded, when we have conceded all the way to death, Jesus reveals to us that there is no loss, no tragedy, no power in heaven or on earth that can, that can keep us away, that can take us out of the reach of God's infinite love. Now, John tells us that many of the Jews who came with Mary had seen what Jesus did. And they started to believe but some of them also went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. And as the story continues, we learn that many of the Jews are now starting to come and believe in Jesus because of his raising of Lazarus. And now the chief priests and the Pharisees are starting to get really nervous. They're worried about the reaction from the Roman Empire. So when we read later on in verse 53, from that day on, it says that they began plotting, plotting to put Jesus to death. And it is not long afterwards, they start plotting to kill Lazarus as well, since he, it was on the account of him that many of the Jews are now deserting the law of Moses and beginning to believe in Jesus. The disciples, in particular Thomas, had feared that returning to Judea would lead to certain death for Christ. 
And he was probably right. Jesus' return to bring Lazarus back to life leads directly to his own death. Here's the good news. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The good shepherd lays down his life in order to take it up again. The resurrection of Lazarus foreshadows that of Jesus. By the way, does anybody know the difference between the resurrection of Lazarus and the resurrection of Jesus? That always confused me when I was younger growing up. One day. Close. <laughs> but Lazarus was brought back to mortal life and would eventually grow old and die again, where Jesus was raised to eternal life. The tomb wouldn't be able to hold him anyway, at least not any more than it could hold Lazarus as soon as Jesus came near. In Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, death has met its match. In these uncertain times, frankly, it sure doesn't feel like death has been defeated. We can all see what's going on around us. We know the illness that are going through this church. We can wonder why. And at times of deep sorrow and grief, we too can relate with Mary and Martha in their deepest despair and question why. We too can cry out in pain and anger and ask our Creator the difficult questions. What about all the hate we see in this world? The greed that makes people starve? What about the children? and the world that they're going to grow up in? What about all these financial issues that we face? The loss of all our loved ones throughout our lifetime? What we're really asking, no, what we really want to know, we want to be assured that all this pain and suffering is going to be worth it. In the face of death, we can be overwhelmed by moments. We can get so overwhelmed at times that we even begin to lose hope or feel helpless. But I stand up here bringing you good news. Even in the depths of our despair, we can truly live and wait in hope because we must remember that God does not always act when, where, or how we would expect. But we do know this. God will act. God acts in God's good time. And death, even death, will not have the final word. And the day of resurrection will come. And we will be able to see and feel God's love in the midst of all the suffering. We call this the day of justice. And we should take great comfort knowing that God will be with us through it all. God will be with us through eternity. Amen. Would you please, please rise now for the second hymn of the morning, uh, morning hymn of the morning. <laughs>
as we reflect on the story, we are reminded of the power of God's love to overcome even death itself. Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb, brings him back to life. It is a testament to our transformation and the nature of God's grace. As we give our offerings today, may we do so in the spirit of trust in God's power that brings hope to our lives. May our gifts be used to further God's kingdom and to spread the message of compassion to all who are in need. Let us give with joy, knowing that our offerings will be used to make a difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others. May we be faithful stewards of all that God has entrusted to us. And may we always be guided by the light of grace. We invite you now to give generously, as you are able. The offering plates do stay at the back of the table, and you can give either before service or after. But know that your gifts are appreciated and will work for God's kingdom. Friday service. 
We are expected, we're expecting a little over 100 people to come for that Good Friday service from all different churches inside of White Cloud, and we are looking for people who would like to help us host. People who can greet people at the door, can help us make some food and refreshments for the community. Um, this is a good opportunity for us to share with the Christian community our faith, right? We can spread this, the, we can take down the walls and spread the kingdom in our community, and this is a great opportunity for that. Are there any other ministry opportunities we would like to share? Uh, the bulletin has a little lie in it, sorry. Uh, we are having choir this week, but it's Thursday at 7, not Thursday. And if you did get to join us last week, we'll still accept your wonderful voice. And thank you to the people who did show up Tuesday. It's going to be a lovely Easter choir. Now would you please rise to sing the final hymn of the morning. God will take care of you. Thank you. 